And the final idea is basically just to combine everything that we've done in not necessarily one sequence because you can create whatever sequences you want to, but just in one concept. So what did we do? We did falls, right? Going in floor. We did rolls. We did landing soft in our handstands and cartwheels. And basically the combination of all of these is what I would call a kind of a every man acrobatics, right? So if you wanted to learn acrobatics, but you weren't too interested in doing the flips and the fancier stuff, but you still wanted the benefits of the coordination and, and still be able to have fun with the practice, this is kind of the direction that I would head to, right? Just basics, but do them cleanly, learn how to combine them, learn how to be soft. And then if you're an athlete that does your own sport, that's not acrobatic in nature, this is kind of that bang for your buck or you would get benefits that carry over to other sports without getting too deep into the technique of actual acrobatic movements. So best thing to do is just set a timer. Um, don't try to be too strict. Just practice all the movements that we've done. Practice your and then kind of see how they flow with or against each other. Well, I can do rolls, I can do cartwheels, I can do handstands, I can do my sideways rolls, I can handstand, roll this way, roll this way, cartwheel, go to the floor, stand up, roll again, roll, and it, it's not choreographed or anything like that. The idea, it's a great cardio workout, by the way, as well. The idea is you figure out the transitions and you don't have to do, so I did kind of everything one after the other in sequence. It doesn't have to be that. You could do one cartwheel, figure out how you landed. Okay, from here, I'm in a position, my right leg is in front, so I can do one roll. Okay, I'm gonna reverse that roll. I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna stay on the floor, do a sideways roll. Now I'm on one knee. From here I can transfer to a handstand. And then maybe here I lose balance. I work on my fall. I get up. So it's this idea of learning how to interface with the floor. I've used that, uh, that term a few times. And adding a few basic movements. We can add jumps, right? Falling, jump, roll, cartwheel. I can add some spins. You can be as creative as you want to with this. So that would be kind of best case scenario is just go, if you have mats, that's great. Uh, if you have a, a field of grass, just go play around with these basic movements and it's gonna make you more confident with falling, with transferring your momentum, with um, moving in different acrobatic mannerisms, but doing it safely, trying to figure out which transitions work well for your body, which ones don't. And when you, and this is particularly good, especially once you get into doing it in sequence like that, because you're gonna figure out these transitional positions and points, and that's gonna help actually with your safety and with your falling in general, because you're gonna have these scenarios downloaded. You're gonna be doing whatever, some kind of move, and you're gonna say, okay, I landed here, I know that I can't finish my landing, so what's, you know, like, whoop, what's the safest way to fall softly out of that to not put myself at risk of getting hurt? So that, that's why you start to, to approach this with the concept of chaos, with the concept of fluidity, and it's less about mechanically learning. We've already mechanically learned the drills. We've already done the ba, ba, ba. So now we put the chaos into it. The cartwheel, I don't know where I'm going. I'm gonna try to roll. Try to roll again. 
pull backwards, handstands, fall, roll, jump, so you get used to, to not having to think and then you know which movement is coming next. Like I said, th this is, you learn the technique of falling, but more important than that, you learn the response, you learn the reaction. You know that if I'm doing, like I said, whatever movement, I landed low. Okay, I was able to still land. Maybe I'm doing another movement. I landed too far back. I take my hands out of the equation. I know my head doesn't touch. You know, I was showing you examples of, of some basic acrobatic movements that you are gonna fall on. When you're learning these movements, you're gonna fall. And you're not gonna land soft when you're first learning any new movement, because it's not there yet. Landing soft takes more than that's like, oh, I didn't make it. So, okay, I didn't wanna fall on my back, because I knew I didn't have enough space. I was a little bit, right? And I'm purposely not finishing, I'm not landing that to show you what it looks like. I know that I'm falling, so I have to make this, I have to make this response to figure it out, how to do it safely. And these aren't as soft. They're not as soft now because I'm actually making myself fall in an uncontrolled manner, which, which is the point. It's the whole point of all of this is you learn how to fall and how to absorb your falls and you have enough of a vocabulary and enough, it's tiring, it's tiring stuff, enough of a vocabulary and enough of a response this is the real injury prevention, right? A lot of people talk about you know, strengthening the knees and the ankles and the wrists, and that's something you should be doing anyway because it's important. But the real injury prevention is not putting yourself in these situations that could potentially do that damage, right? So just to give an example of the ankle, so this is a very common ankle injury, ankle sprain landing like this, right? Landing on that, that blade of the foot, it twists, it gets bent. So one methodology is, okay, I'm going to do a lot of walks like this. I'm going to strengthen the ankle in that position. Good. That's a good methodology. The reality is that this is not a position meant to absorb a lot of force. So no matter how strong your ankle is here, at a certain point, if the angle's right, if the moon is right, it's going to break your ankle or sprain it or whatever, do some kind of damage. So the second methodology is, I have enough sensitivity that if I feel myself landing in that position, I know how to collapse, how to transfer so I'm out of that potentially dangerous position. And, and that's something that you have to do with specific training and specific training of kind of putting yourself in those positions that are a little bit chaotic, a little bit unpredictable. Take it slow, obviously. That's how we did all the slow movements, learning how to fall not just falling right away, because you don't know yet what your reflexes are. And if you have the wrong reflexes, like this, it's a really bad reflex to have. That's a reflex that, uh, that could get you into some trouble. So also making sure that if you have certain reflexes that you take the time to break those and build new habits. But yeah, that's kind of the, this would be again, basic everyman acrobatics. If someone, wanted to do some kind of acrobatic training, whether it was for fun or just for the benefits of the coordination, I wouldn't probably go further than this. Handstands, cartwheels, rolls, jumps, and falls. And then likewise, if you do want to get into more advanced acrobatic movements, I would highly recommend getting comfortable with this because you're gonna have confidence trying new moves, trying new skills, because you don't have to deal with the fear of falling as much. It's always there when you're learning something new. There is a psychological restriction. There is going to be a fear depending on the movement that you're learning. But the point is that the better you are at falling in different ways, the less scary it's going to be because you have more confidence that you won't get hurt.
and try it. Right? So, yeah, that's uh, basic everyman acrobatics. <laughs>